In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this crochet cropped tank top. I am making it in a size small, but I show you how to adjust it for your size in the video. If you have any questions about the pattern or the size, please let me know down below and I will get back to you. Please also let me know if you need the row counts for a size outside of the extra small to 3XL range that I show in this video. For this project I used just over 100 grams of 8 ply yarn which depending on where you're from might be called light or DK weight. I also used a 4.5mm hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors and some stitch markers. To start we're going to grab our yarn and create a slip knot. Insert our 4.5mm hook and now we're going to chain up 45. Once you've got your chain up of 45, we're going to block off that last stitch and do a slip stitch into the second stitch from the hook. So going into that second stitch from the hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. Into that next stitch, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. Now you're just gonna continue going all the way down, doing slip stitches until you get to the end, and then you can join back in and I will show you the next row. Now I've made it to the end of the row and I'm just doing my last slip stitch. Now to turn, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to go all the way back down doing back loop slip stitches. So you can see there's a little V in the stitch here. This is the front loop closest to your body and this is the back loop. So we're gonna go into that back loop only. Now we're gonna skip that stitch that we used to chain up. So we're gonna go into the second stitch from the hook and go into that back loop only. Now we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and pull through again, just like we were doing before. So this is a back loop slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. Now you just need to continue doing back loop slip stitches all the way until you get to the end. Then you do a chain up one again, turn your work and continue doing back loop slip stitches. This is gonna be the main stitch that we use for our project. And right now, what we've done so far is the same for both the back panel and the front panel. So if you are doing the back panel, you need to continue doing these back loop slip stitches with no increases or decreases until you have a wide enough panel to go along your back. So go ahead doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch with a chain one and a turn at the end until you've done as many rows as you need to do for your size. If you're making an extra small, you'll need to do 54 rows. A small is 60 rows, a medium is 66 rows, a large is 70 rows, an extra large is 76 rows, 2XL is 80 rows and a 3XL is 86 rows. I am making this in a size small so I will do 60 rows. Once you've done as many rows as you need to do for your size, your back panel should be looking a little something like this. I also wanted to add here that if you make this top and you find that it's a little bit too small or a little bit too big than what you wanted it to be, you could just add a few rows to the back panel or take a few rows off and it won't affect the overall top. It's much harder to add or take rows from the front panel because it's different, but the back panel, it won't be affected. And now we are going to get started on the front panel. So jump back to the start of the video where we started our chains and do the same thing that we did for the back panel for the first couple of rows. So once you've done that, we're going to continue doing the back loop slip stitches for two more rows with no increase or decrease. So we're currently on the second row. I'm not counting the foundation chain. So we've got row one, row two. So now you're going to do 
row three and four and finish up the end of the line for row four and we're going to do an increase in row four. So the first three rows are with no increases or decreases. This count of four rows is going to be the same no matter what size you're making. So just continue going all the way down this row doing your back loop slip stitches. When you get to the end, do what we've just done, chain one, turn our work and continue going back down. Keep going until you are at the end of row four and I will show you how we'll do our first increase. Now we've made it to the end of row four and I've just got two stitches left. In the second last stitch, I'm going to do a normal back loop slip stitch. And then in the last stitch, I'm going to do two back loop slip stitches. So do your first back loop slip stitch as normal. And then you're going to go straight back into that same stitch and do another back loop slip stitch. Now we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and we're going to do one back loop slip stitch into every row as normal. So skipping that turning chain, I'm going to go into that first back loop slip stitch. And do my back loop slip stitch and continue going all the way down doing back loop slip stitches as normal. When you get to the end, we're going to chain up one, turn our work and come back up to the top where we're going to do another increase. So for the next few rows, every even numbered row, we're going to do an increase at the end of the row. And every odd row will just be a normal row of back loop slip stitches. So continue going down and when you get to the end of row six, I will show you the increase again one more time. And then we will continue on doing this next chunk with the increases on every even numbered stitch. Now I'm back at the end of row six. So these are the last two stitches left in row five. So now I'm going to do a normal back loop slip stitch. And then into that last row, I'm going to do two back loop slip stitches and that will finish off row six. So now I've got another one. And now we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and then skipping that turning chain into the next stitch, I'm going to do a back loop slip stitch as normal to start off row seven. And now we're going to keep going all the way down, doing a chain up one to turn around and come back up as normal. So now you can see, if I can fit it in the camera, the bottom is going to be flat and stay flat the whole time, whereas the top is going to start curving up to make a sweetheart neckline. Here is the number of rows that you will need to do in this section for each size, as well as the total row count that it will bring you up to once you've done that many. So for an extra small it's 8, a small is 10, a medium is 10, a large and extra large are 12, and a 2XL and a 3XL are 14. As I'm making a small, I'm going to do 10 rows in this section, which will bring me up to row 14. So just do as many rows as you need to do to get to your row count. Just make sure that you are doing the increase at the end of every even numbered row in this section. So now I've made it to the end of row 14 and I've just done an increase and I've done my chain up one to turn around. And now we're going to do what we normally do for the odd numbered rows. So this is row 15. We're going to do our back loop slip stitches with no increases, but we're going to continue doing back loop slip stitches with no increases for the next few rows. So just continue going down as normal. And when you come back up to the top, you're not going to do an increase. You're going to do what we did at the very start or what we did for the back panel where there is no increases at the top or the bottom to make it flat. So once you get to the end, you're going to chain up one, turn around and do back loop slip stitches coming back up to the top. And then when you get to the end, you'll just do one back loop slip stitch into every stitch as normal and chain up one and turn around with no increase. So go ahead with doing rows with no increases or decreases for the next six rows. It'll be six rows no matter what size you're doing and I've put the total row count that this will bring you up to on the screen. 
and the six rows is including the row that we're currently doing now. So now I've reached the top of row 20 and I've just done the last five rows with no increases or decreases. So you can see it's starting to even out. So now for this row, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna chain up one and turn as normal. But now I'm going to count 18 stitches going back down. So we're just going to count, not counting the turning chain, I'm gonna count 18. So this stitch here is 18 and I'm just gonna put in a stitch marker. If you don't have stitch markers, that's fine. They're not necessary. Um, you can just count 18 stitches as you go and keep track of them that way. But I've got stitch markers, so I'm just gonna put one in there. And now I'm going to do a back loop slip stitch as normal until I get to the 18th stitch. So continue doing your back loop slip stitches. Now I've made it up to the 18th stitch and I'm going to do a back loop slip stitch into that 18th stitch. And now what we're going to do is turn around and go back the other way. But I'm not going to do a chain up this time because I want this to be as flat as possible. So I'm just going to turn around and go straight into that first stitch there and do a back loop slip stitch as normal. And then continue doing back loop slip stitches until you get to the top. So I'm putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And this is row 22. So for row 23, we're going to do a decrease. So now we're just gonna chain up one as normal, turn our work, and to do the decrease, we're gonna go into that first stitch, so skipping the turning chain into that first stitch, insert yarn over, pull through, and then without pulling through again, we're gonna go straight into that next stitch, insert yarn over, pull through, and now pull through both of the loops on the hook. So that's a decrease. So we're just going to do one of those and now we're going to continue going down doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and when you get to what will now be the 17th stitch because we've joined two together so when we get to here I'm going to show you how to keep going. So I'm just going to count from the start of this row to make sure that I have 17 stitches to make sure it's even. So we've got one, two, three. So I need one more. That last stitch might be a bit hard to grab because we didn't have a turning chain. Here we go. And now we're going to just go into the next stitch along. So this is the 18th stitch here. That's where we turned around last time. This is stitch 19 and I'm just going to do a back loop slip stitch into stitch 19 as normal and continue going all the way down the rest of the row doing back loop slip stitches as normal. Now, when you get to the end, we're just going to chain one, turn around, come back as normal, but we're going to keep doing the decreases at the start of the odd numbered rows. So this is row 23 and we did a decrease at the start of row 23. So row 24 will be no decreases and row 25 will decrease again when we come back down. But I will show you how to do that. So continue going down this row, come back up to the top and I will show you the next two rows. This is the row count for a size small only, but if you're doing another size, just treat it as your next even numbered row and odd numbered row. I just wanted to jump in here to say that we're going to be doing this little half row 
uh, four times in total in this pattern, so two on the left side and two on the right side. If you have a larger bust, you might want to consider adding in some more of these half rows, as long as you make sure you're doing the same row combination as that section that you're adding the half rows to. So if it, you're doing a decrease section or an increase section or a flat section, just make sure that if you're adding in the half rows, they are also the same with the increases or decreases or however you are and you could definitely add these to the row or replace other rows with them just depending on the ratio between your bust and your waist. I'm not sure how helpful the diagrams on the screen are but if I'm not explaining it very well hopefully they pick up the pieces. So now I'm up to the end of row 24 so you can see I've come back past that little bump. It's just going to give us a little bit more room in the top part. So now I'm just going to do a back loop slip stitch into the last two stitches, no decreases. And then we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to do a decrease into the first two stitches. So skipping that turning chain into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, straight into that second stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through both of the loops on the hook. Now you're just going to go ahead doing back loop slip stitches going all the way down and this is going to be the repeating pattern for the next few rows. So every even numbered row is now not going to have any decreases or increases but every odd numbered row is going to have a decrease at the start. Keep going with these row combinations until you get up to the row count for your size which is up on the screen. So an extra small keep going till you get to 26, a small is 28, a medium 30, a large 32, an extra large 34, 2XL 36 and a 3XL 38. The numbers for this one are a little bit confusing but I've put the 2 plus other number because the 2 is the little half row that we did and then the other number is the number of rows that you will need to do with a decrease at the start of the odd numbered rows and no decreases or increases on the even numbered rows. So now I'm up to the top of row 28 and we've done two decreases so far. So now I'm going to be doing another decrease, but I, I'm going, this is an even numbered row. So I'm going to do no increases or decreases and do my last two slip stitches. And then I'm going to chain up one, turn my work. And now we're going to count 16 stitches. So last time we did 18 stitches, but we've done two decreases now. So we're going to count 16 stitches, not counting the turning chain. 16. So I'm just going to put my stitch marker in at 16. And now we are going to continue this row with another decrease like we've done for the last odd numbered rows. So I'm going to do my decrease into the first two stitches and then continue doing one back loop slip stitch into every other stitch going down. And this time, because we've stitched two together, you should have 15 stitches on this row when we get up to the stitch marker, but it was the 16th stitch of the previous row. So now I'm going into the 16th stitch. I can take that stitch marker out. And now we're not going to chain up just like we did last time. Turn and go straight into that stitch with a back loop slip stitch. And then continue going all the way up to the top. So now that I'm at the top, I'm going to do my last two back loop slip stitches. Chain up one, turn my work, and we're going to do a decrease again. So a decrease into the first two stitches. So now we're going to have 14 stitches when we get down here because we've just done the decrease of one. So two,
and that last stitch is hard to see but don't forget about it that's 14 and now I'm just going to go into that next stitch so this is the stitch here that we did that we turned around in so I'm going to go into that next stitch and continue going all the way down as normal so for the next few rows we're going to go back to doing our decreases on at the start of the odd numbered rows and having all of our even numbered rows be with no increases or decreases so continue the pattern that we've started with keeping it straight along the bottom and doing no increases on the way up and do a decrease at the start of every odd row for the next 12 rows. This is the same for every size. So just like that last section, I put the 2 plus because the 2 is the little half row and then the plus is 12 and all sizes will do a 12. So just keep going until you get up to the row count uh, listed on the screen right now and I'm doing a small so I'll be going up to row 42. Okay so now I'm back at the top of row 42 and you can see here this is that last short row so we've got 12 rows including that row up to row 42 and now we're going to do the next few rows with no increases or decreases. So I've done my last back loop slip stitch into the last stitch and now I'm going to chain up one and just put one slip stitch into every stitch going all the way down with no increases or decreases. So now you're going to keep going with the rows of no increase and no decrease until you've done six rows for an extra small, eight for a small or medium, 10 for a large or extra large, or 12 for a 2XL or 3XL. I've also put the row counts up on the screen. So for me, I'm making it a small, and I will continue until I get up to row 50. Once you've made it to the row that you need to for this row count, join back in and we're going to do some increases. So now I've made it to the end of row 50 and I just have two stitches left, but we're actually going to be doing an increase in this row. So now I'm going to do a back loop slip stitch as normal into the second last stitch and then into the last stitch, we're going to do what we did before by doing two back loop slip stitches. So going back into that same loop going to do another back loop slip stitch and now we're going to chain up one as normal turn our work and do one back loop slip stitch into each stitch going all the way back down so now we're going to continue doing these back loop slip stitches with an increase at the end of every even numbered row. So that was row 50, so we did an increase at the end of the row until you've done 10 rows. So including the row that we've just done, we're gonna count from row 50 for 10 rows, doing an increase at the end of every even row. And that's 10 rows for all sizes. If you're doing it extra small, this will bring you up to row 56. A small is row 60, a medium is row 62, a large is row 66. An extra large is 68, 2XL is 72, and 3XL is 74. And I will be up to row 60 for a small. So now I'm at the end of row 60, and we're mirroring the other side. So we're going to do this little short row here to make it even. So I've just done two slip stitches into this last stitch. So we just did an increase. And now I'm going to chain up one. And now I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next 15 stitches. So you can count out 15 and put in a stitch marker or you can just count as you go. I'm going to count out 15 as I go. So one slip stitch into every stitch as normal for an odd numbered row. and 15. So now we can check it with the other side to make sure that it's even, and it is. See, that's the end of the other one there. So now we're not going to chain up one, we're just gonna turn around like we did last time and go straight back in with no chains. So you can see this is stitch 15 here. So now I'm just gonna go back in and put one slip stitch 
into every stitch. And then in the last stitch, I'm going to put two slip stitches to do an increase because this is row 62, which is an even row. So we need to have an increase at the end of the row. So now I'm going to put my two slip stitches into that last stitch there. One and back into that same hole, two. Now I'm going to chain up one, turn my work and I'm going to go back down doing one slip stitch into every stitch as normal. And keep doing this for the number of rows shown on the screen. We're back to the two pluses, so the two is those half rows, and then after that you're going to need to do four rows for an extra small or small, a medium and large is six, an XL and two XL is eight, and a three XL is ten. So I've also put the row counts up on the screen if that helps you. So we're going to do rows with the normal back loop slip stitches and an increase on each even numbered row. So continue doing that until you get up to the row count for your size. Okay, so now I've made it to the end of row 66 and we are going to do our next little short row. So I've just done an increase in the last stitch. So I've done two back loop slip stitches in that last stitch because it's an even row and we're doing increases on all the even rows. So now I'm going to chain up one, turn my work, and we're going to do a back loop slip stitch in the first 17 stitches. Just like before, you can count 17 and add a stitch marker, or you can just count as you go. I'm just going to count 17 stitches. Seventeen. So now I've got 17 stitches, 17, and now we're not going to chain up again. We're going to, just going to turn straight around and go back up doing our back loop slip stitches into every stitch. So this is now row 68. I'm going to go all the way up to the top and do two back loop slip stitches into the last crease because it's an even numbered row so we have to do our increase. Now into that last stitch, I'm going to do two back loop slip stitches, chain up one. So that was row 68. So now for the next six rows, we're going to do no increases or decreases. And that's going to be six rows for all sizes, plus the two from those half little rows. So for an extra small, you'll get up to row 70, a small is 74, a medium is 78, a large is 82, XL is 86, 2XL is 90, and 3XL is 94. So now continue doing back loop slip stitches all the way down with no increases or decreases at the top, just doing the straight ones like we did at the top when we were here. So go ahead and do the next six rows. Okay, so once you've finished your six rows from this little half row, you should have 74 rows and I'm up to the end of 74 rows so we've done these six rows with no increase or decrease and now we're going to start decreasing to mirror this section on the other side. So for the next 10 rows we're going to do a decrease at the start of every odd numbered row and no increases or decreases on every even row. So this is row 74 so it's an even row so I'm just going to chain up one and turn around and now for row 75, as an odd number, we're going to do a decrease. So just like before, insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then straight into that second stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through, and pull through both the loops on the hook. So now you're just going to continue going ahead, doing back loop slip stitches all the way down as usual, 
and when you come back up to the top you won't do any increases or decreases because it will be row 76 which is an even numbered row but when you turn around we're going to do a decrease again for the odd numbered rows so continue going ahead until you've done the number of rows on the screen and for an extra small that'll be 10 a small and medium is 12 a large and extra large is 14 a 2xl and 3xl is 16. And for the overall row count, we've got 80 for an extra small, 86 for a small, 90 for a medium, 96 for a large, 100 for an extra large, 106 for a 2XL, and 110 for a 3XL. And then join back in where we're just going to have a couple more rows to finish off, and then that'll be done. Okay, so once you've finished your 10 rows with a decrease on every odd row you should be up to row 84 and now for the next three rows we're just going to do three regular rows with no increases or decreases and that's three rows for all sizes so for an extra small that will bring you up to row 83 a small is 89 medium is 93 a large is 99 xl is 103 2xl is 109 and 3xl is 113 so I'm going to chain up one and I'm not going to do any decreases or increases. I'm just going to keep it flat. So now you can go ahead for rows 85, 86 and 87, doing it with no increases or decreases. And that will mirror the other side where, we, where it was flat as well. So now you can go ahead and do that and then you will have finished the front of your top. Once you have finished, it should be looking something like this. Now we're going to join the front and back panel together. So go ahead and grab your back panel and line it up with your front panel. So what we're going to do is for one side of the back panel, we've got the chain and same with the front panel and we're going to not line up the two chains we're going to make sure that the chains are on opposite end so for the back panel the chain section will be connected to the non-chain section of the front and vice versa just to make sure that we're not getting a gap or anything like that by connecting the two chain sections together now the it should be reversible it should be the same but if you had any areas or lumps or bumps um, make sure that you put that on the inside when we're doing this just so that you don't have to have it showing also uh, matching up the chain with the non-chain side means that the non-chain side will still have a tail if you haven't cut it off and same with the front you should still have a tail if you are going to cut off at the end once you've finished just make sure you leave enough tail to connect them together so now you can go ahead and connect both of the sides together you can do this using a darning needle or you can just do slip stitches with your hook, whichever one you prefer. So go ahead and connect it all, all the way along on both of the sides and then join back in. And we still need to do the straps. Okay, so now that you've stitched the edges together, you can see there, I've turned it in the right way. So I stitched it this way and now I've turned it in the right way. And we're going to get started on the arm straps. I've already started one over here. So we're basically going to be doing the same thing on this side. We're going to be doing slip stitches up to the point where we want the strap and then we're going to do the strap and then bring it around on the other side as well. So to do that, you're going to need to join on with your yarn. If you've stitched it up and you happen to end up at the top of this one, you can just continue on from there. You don't need to cut and tie, but I'm going to need to join on. So to do that, I'm just going to make a slip knot. Insert my hook and secure. And now I'm going to insert it into that gap where we joined. So just go into that middle gap somewhere. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on the hook as well. So now we've joined on. So now I'm going to do one slip stitch in the first 15 rows. So I'm going to count from the first raised row. I think that this would actually be the first row, but we're counting from the first raised row because we've joined on to the divot row. So into the top of the first raised row, we're going to do 
a slip stitch. So just like we did before, pull through, pull through again. And now into that divot row, I'm going to do a slip stitch and into the raised row. So basically you wanna make sure that you're going into both the raised and the divot rows and not just going one in all of them because it's gonna pull it too tight. So we're gonna do a slip stitch into the divot row and then the raised row. Now you're just gonna keep going until you've done 15 or if you're making a different size until you get to the top of where the stitches start to go flat. So where you get to the first row where you started to go flat, that's where we're gonna stop. So basically the number of slip stitches that you're going to need to do here is the same as what we did for the first two rows combined, plus one. So for an extra small, it's 13, a small and medium, it's 15, large and extra large, it's 17, and 2XL and 3XL, it's 19. And you should end on a raised row. So we've got, this is the last of the flattened raised row or the first, depending on which side you had come from. So now that we've done 15, I'm going to chain up 40. This is going to determine the tightness of the strap. So if you want a bigger strap or you want it to be lower cut, just add more chains. But I made it fairly tight, but it's not scrunched up under my armpit. And now we've got 40. So now what we're going to do is count from the middle. And we're gonna count 15 rows out to the side or however many you need to do for your size which will be the same as the front part and i have popped the numbers back on the screen so we're going to go to the middle and i'm going to count this one this time so we're going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and that's this gap here I'm just gonna put a stitch marker, but we are about to go into it, so you don't need to do that. This measurement across here should be the same as what you did for the front. So if you're doing a different size, just do the same number on the front and the back of the arm. You can definitely adjust this depending on if you have um, smaller arms, larger arms, bigger bust, all of that kind of stuff. Just do what you feel is right and do maybe the first bit and the strap, then try it on, see if it's in the right spot, that kind of thing. I have done this to the measurements of my body, but obviously everybody is different and the measurements that suit me might not suit you and that's to be expected really. So now I'm going to make sure that it's not twisted. So you can see I'm measuring it up from here to here, making sure it's not twisted. And you wanna make sure that you're going in through the front and not through the back because we want these stitches to cover the top and make it look nice. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm going in through the front into the top of that stitch that we marked off, the 15th stitch. So we're going to insert in there and I'm gonna double check that it's not twisted, which it is. So we'll try that again. insert into that stitch and now it's not twisted so I can continue doing my slip stitches so I'm just going to yarn over pull through pull through again and now I'm going to go into the top of every row just like we did before making sure we get the top of the divot rows and the raised rows and just do a slip stitch into every stitch. You wanna make sure that these slip stitches aren't pulled too tight, um, but also aren't super gapy and loose either. Just make sure that they're firm without, being, without pulling the top tight. So now I'm just doing my last slip stitch. And then we are going to join on to that first stitch that we did. So insert through both loops. We're not doing the back loop this time. Through both loops and do a slip stitch 
and then I'm going to chain up one and cut that off. So that's the arm portions of the straps. Now we're going to do that all again, but we're going to do it for this middle neckline at the front and the back as well so that we can have it all nice and pretty at the top and it's also going to give us that double strap look. So now you need to pick a point to join on and because we are not starting from the armpits we're going to have to join in somewhere at the front and the back. I would recommend joining at the back. So I'm going to turn this around and now I'm going to do exactly what we did last time and I'm going to do a slip knot. And I forgot to mention, you'll have to do both of the arms first before you do this part. So if you've just done the first one, go ahead and do the second. Except for the second one, you're going to start off by going towards the back. Once you've joined on, go towards the back. So just make sure that you are going the way that feels natural to put these on the outside rather than on the inside. So one way is going to go towards the front and one way is going to go towards the back. So now we're going to join on. And I'm going to join on to the next stitch across. So we went into the divot row here. I'm going to go into that raised row and I'm going to uh, do the slip knot, insert my hook, pull it tight and go into that raised row next to the row that we just went into and then secure on. So now we're basically just going to go in a giant circle I'm going to go and do a slip stitch going into every row going across the back. So making sure you get every row. Okay, so we're coming up onto the other strap. And I'm just going to get that stitch marker out of the way. So now, just like we did when we started off, the last stitch we're going to do is into the top of the stitch next to it. And now we're going to do exactly what we did for the arm straps and chain up 40. Okay, so once you've done your 40 chains, we're going to do what we did last time and flip it over. And now I'm going to make sure that my chain is not twisted. So line it up. And now we're going to do exactly what we did at the back. We're going to join on to that next stitch over. So for the front, it's the divot stitch. So I'm just going to join into that stitch and do a slip knot to join. So now we're going to do slip stitches into every row. Just continuing what we've been doing, except this time I'm going to skip a couple of the rows just to make the V at the front a bit more pronounced. So I'm going to count now so that I don't miss them when I'm doing it later, but you can just count as you go. But I'm going to go to this row that was the short row here and I'm going to put a stitch marker into the row two along. So I'm going to count from this one, I'm going to count the next raised row and the raised row after that and put a stitch marker in there and do the same thing on the other side. One, two. I'm also going to count to the middle. and I'm going to put a stitch marker into that middle stitch, which I don't have. So that's optional. I just wanted to pull it a little bit tighter at the front. So that's gonna be the 18th stitch from this side and also the 18th stitch from this side and then 30, so the 30th stitch long. So we're doing the 18th, then the 30th and then the 42nd, we're going to do a decrease. 
So these numbers are just for the size small, but for any other size, just follow the instructions that I gave about doing two along from the short row and the middle row. So keep going along until you get to that first stitch marker. Okay, so now I'm up to that stitch that we marked off and I'm just going to skip right over it. I'm not going to do a decrease because I don't want the I don't want these slip stitches to look any different, so I'm just going to skip right over it and go into that next stitch along. Make sure that the stitch marker is out of the way. And then continue on as normal doing your slip stitches. So now this is the middle row here. So I'm going to go into the one beside it and skip right over that middle row and go into the next one. Now I'm going to continue until the next stitch marker and then do the exact same thing. So now we're up to that next stitch marker and I'm just doing the one before it. Now I'm going to skip right over the top of that row and go into the next row. Now we are back up to the start. So I'm just going to do my last stitch into this raised row here and do a chain up of 40 again to get back to where we started. And 40. And now we're going to do what we did before, flip it over and make sure that our chain is not twisted. I'm just going to turn this around. So making sure that the chain is not twisted, I'm going to insert into the front of that first stitch that we did. So I'm going to go in over the top of it and do another slip stitch. So I'm going to go into the back now just to secure it a bit more. So this you won't be able to see. I'm just going in to the back of that stitch to do another slip stitch and then chain up one, pull it out, and then you'll just tuck the end in sort of to give make it a bit more secure. So I've just done that into the back there so that you won't see it. So now you can secure your yarn and that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. If you make any of my projects, please tag me on Instagram at stephtashi underscore handmade. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot to a small channel like mine.